This robot analysis is sponsored by Thea Study, the largest native AI study platform in the world. Link in the description. Today I'm joined by Connor M and we're doing a match analysis of the finals match of the Hyundai Big Competition. So let's get started with the auto first. You've seen this match already, so and also you've probably seen a lot of matches from this tournament. What do you think about this tournament? I think this tournament's been pretty good. I think it's this it has many of the major orgs here in China. There's really only a couple that didn't go, so I think it's a good showing for all the orgs. Obviously, some orgs didn't do that well. Ray Gwen, they dominated in high school, but didn't do well in middle school. But, you know, I guess we'll see. we got some more competitions coming up, so hopefully we can see some more dominant performances out of these teams. Yeah, one thing I wanted to point out about this 9123 team here, really close to us, is just their Dwinker mech, right? As yeah. we saw BarkBots or very early season, this has been extremely good, and I'm definitely seeing a lot more teams put this on just to clear that corner. And I've seen, like, I think all the Rugon teams actually have this, right? Yeah, I think it's just really helpful for many things. Clearing rings out of the way, getting goals, you can knock over goals with them. Potentially, we could even see if we use as a rush mech. It's something we didn't see from China that much in Tipping Point. But who knows, maybe we'll start seeing some more rushes for that third goal in Auton. Yeah, I mean, this match is kind of different compared to some of the early, some of the earlier matches in Elims. Uh, some of the early matches in Elims, I've seen only one robot from each alliance just dedicated to those corners. And then the other two robots would go for the wall stakes. But in this match here, yeah. actually, all four robots fought for the corners towards the start. And I feel like a reason to that is just because of how fast these guys' intake mechanisms are. See, I think two or even three of those goals might be close to getting full already. Especially here, they're in the far corner. They're already fighting with two full goals. What do you think? Yeah, they know, I mean, every team here is really good. They know it's the best of the best. They really got to step up the game here. They can't be lazy in this match. This is literally as qualification stakes on the line. They really have to, they really got to put their A game into this match. Yeah, could you talk a little bit more about just how these Rugon teams practice because I know they've been dominating worlds for the past couple years now. Yeah, they do a, a lot of it's really calculated. They try to they try to split up the game into like different portions. So I'll talk talk about spin up a little bit because I was kind of more involved with that. Absolutely. But for spin up, they really wanted the the first thing they really realized is when you go for the goal, the really back side of the goal is the really hardest to shoot into because you can't really approach it head on. You kind of got to go at an angle. So they really trained their shots at the back of the goal a lot. So what they did is they actually they cut out the front part of the goal so they could train that. They do have to hit the hardest shots first, even if they're having defense on them in the very like middle of the match, at the end of the match. If they train the hardest shots first, they have easier shots they can make, and they know they can make those. So they really do that a lot. They, they do really a lot of smart things. They get comfortable with like where they shoot. They're first comfortable shooting in the goal. Okay, now let's work outside the goal. And pretty soon, they can shoot from pretty much anywhere, and under defense or anything. It doesn't really matter. You know, you, you see a lot of China matches. You don't think they really plan for defense because there's no defense in China, but there is, and they really do plan because they know that's what matters at Worlds. Yeah, that's an absolutely amazing strategy, and I really like to see like how they're going to be developing uh, similar strategies this year. With I mean, just doing what is difficult first, so then they can have that smooth ride for the rest of the match, right? Yeah, and it's definitely. I think it's going to happen. I think it's definitely going to. Uh, it's the type of strategy that a lot of teams are, or always a lot of teams are probably going to develop. You know, they gotta, they gotta do what they can to make the match go in their favor. Yeah, I think this tournament here really taught them, and also just teams around the world. Uh, the importance of those high stakes and just getting that top ring, right? Especially 18522R here with their dominance of those wall stakes and the top ring of the wall stakes has been a great showing of just how prevalent wall stake play could be at the highest level and how much that can swing the tides of a match. Yeah, I think it's really interesting to mention them because they, they only can score one ring at a time, but they're they're outplaying teams that can score two rings at a time with those um there's a redirect max. So I think it's really interesting to see how they're doing better than teams that can score multiple ones. And I think it's my just so fast. indicate a shift in strategy and stuff where maybe it's not about scoring as many rings on the wall stakes. It's all about ownership and stuff. Something we saw back in the day with change up with China. Yeah, right. I feel like they just have, I mean, really good positioning too. They're able to balance the role of playing those, those wall stakes and also protecting the corner. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned that literally. Harrison's spending a good solid 10 seconds there trying to get that top ring on the goal. I think that, I think that's a really good thing you mentioned there. How uh, it's really simple. It's just something really simple to do. They intake from the back of their intake. They don't have to redirect it. It's just simple. They just use their arm, put a slam it down there, and back away. So much wow. than using your wow. redirect mech. Yeah, you saw that last second play there, going for that. Yeah, yeah they just cleared crazy. the red out like crazy. Yeah, that's just crazy. And typically, I, I don't want to say this, but typically, I feel like bad robot isn't an org i typically look out for they, they will qualify a team the world but i think this season is really showing them as really dominant as far as like early season play and hopefully this continues on for the rest of the season yeah i feel like just drivers should be or even drivers and drive coaches should be a lot more aware of just uh, who is in ownership of those wall stakes right 
Yeah, I think this really is something that we're going to see a lot more, and especially in SIGs like Sugar Rush and Kalahari. We're probably going to start seeing a lot more American teams do this, and I feel like it, you should almost have a dedicated person who's in charge of, like, tracking all the goals and seeing, like, okay, this one's, you know, got a top SIG is blue, okay, but is there a ring close enough to me where I can go and actually score it and make it my top ring, or is it even farther away? Maybe it's not worth it. Yeah, I feel like some of the important things to be tra keeping track of is going to be, you know, those top rings and also, of course, like, who has an opening on those goals, those corners, right? And just, because I've seen a lot of these scores, right? And a lot of teams just yeah. lose off of the last couple seconds. So that's definitely a thing to be paying extreme attention yeah, to. Some, yeah, definitely something teams really have to keep an eye out as they go into higher and higher play as the season progresses. Yeah, I think that's about it for we have for this match here. Yep. Thank you for watching.